Okay, thank you. First of all, thank you, to, uh, big thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to speak about the Overpass API, which is in indeed part of the OpenStreetMap community. And that is why I will start to talk a little bit about OpenStreetMap. The important thing is it's not just the map, but it's the general purpose geodata. We are offering a big, huge data set of geodata and not, not a map, and not, not mainly a map. And of course, it's license library. There had been a lot of discussion which license to take, but uh, now everything has settled down to the uh, open database license. Okay, it covers the entire world. It covers each and every subject. And it is maintained by a marvelous community. You see these uh, dots uh, getting a light in the background. This is a day of edits in uh, Great Britain. And um, Whenever there's something alive, then it's, that's an hour where of edits in Great Britain. So you see there's even uh, during a day, there's a lot of, of activity in the country. So you have after a day, you have a different map from a country like Great Britain than, than the day before. So it's actually we have uh, 2.5 billion nodes, which amount to in total 40 gigabyte of compressed uh, gigazip uh, XML data. And there are coming updates in each minute. So although it's great to have such a huge data set, it's difficult to process it. If you really want to process this, you would have to run your own server with uh, not so insignificant uh, computing power. If you just want to process this, uh, this full data dump, we are offering, offering a full data dump, the Planet OSM, which is produced uh, roughly once per week. And it's not unusual to have uh, 24 hours, hours time to get this into a, a relational database. So that's where OpenStreet, uh, where the Overpass API comes in. And an overlay only needs some 100 points, like the thing you see here. I've just uh, made a map of all the um, power distribution lines in the Netherlands. And you only need a few hundred um, nodes to, to produce a proper map and you don't want to, to deal with all the 2.5 billion nodes in this case. So uh, the Overpass API supplies you with uh, such a language such that you can query the entire database and just get on time the result, including the latest edits. For example, these six lines suffice to get all the power line network of the Netherlands. Who uses the Overpass API? For example, this is just a standard use case where you have a slippy map with a point uh, with a POI overlay. So they have quite few things to do. You have just to, to host somewhere a static HTML page. You can t use the open layers as a framework to, to get the real interaction. And the data supply from the data itself comes from OpenStreetMap and uh, the Overpass API gives a data supply such that you can move around this map and get always a list of, uh, in this case, hotels or whatever. Another more innovative uh, use case is uh, indoor navigation. This is always very few places in comparison to the entire world have really the necessity, necessity to have indoor navigation. You won't have it out in the desert. You would only have it in big buildings in the city. So. Um, this is also a case where you, once you are know which, uh, which building to consider, you want uh, quite a few distinctive uh, data sets. And that's also where the, back where the data comes from the Overpass API and uh, somebody could concentrate on making a cool framework to present this data and not how to needn't to worry how to get this data from the backend. So just to give an overview, this is uh, really these 2.5 billion nodes I've uh, cited. This is the OpenStreetMap database. And uh, to, keep open uh, to keep the database running, even with a very small budget, the entire OpenStreetMap uh, is running on about 25,000 euro per year. We have this database server, which has an API on its own, but this is uh, dedicated only to editing software not for data consumers. 
because they really need to, to get a synchronization because otherwise you would get conflicts when you try to write back data that uh, updates that were based on outdated data. So only, the, only those editing softwares should uh, connect directly to the uh, OpenStreetMap uh, database server. And everybody else should run or use a data mirror. mirror. And this is why there's this whole, um, this whole ecosystem of, uh, of uh, data mirror service. They all take the updates that are um, coming in from the OpenStreetMap database once per minute and process them to, to keep an up-to-date copy of the OpenStreetMap database. For example, even, oh, I don't have a ah, mouse, even uh, the rendering software that does the uh, well-known map on OSM org that a lot of uh, talks before this day have been used. This is, even this is uh, produced on a mirror server that then does all the rendering. And uh, this is also where Overpass API is placed. It really keeps uh, an up-to-date copy. And now you can have innovative applications, slippy maps, or whatever you want without a dedicated backend just by fetching the data as you need it with these uh, requests from the Overpass API. I'll just present some uh, additional use cases. For example, um, map making. There's a software mapper mapperative where you could just uh, download a certain uh, region of uh, data and then produce uh, a map from it. And that's also they don't need to worry about the backend how to get the data because it's uh, that's brought by the overpass API and they could uh, put all effort in making a good rendering. So you could really have um, a, a poster of a map uh, quite easily with this software. You could uh, pull data into QGIS. There's even nowadays a plugin called Quick OSM that will help you to pull data from OpenStreetMap into QGIS and so on. And of course, one of the probably most important is uh, for me is the Overpass Turbo, which is uh, which has somebody else, Martin Reifer, has written, which is the front end to make all these, uh, to make these uh, queries or to, to give to these queries immediately a reply how this looks on a map. So it's quite convenient to develop uh, queries if you just could push on run this query and get the results presented in a map. It's of course of most use for those who are involved in OpenStreetMap uh, themselves. But to get you more involved into OpenStreetMap, I will just uh, conclude with uh, explaining some query examples. For example, we wanted to get all the post boxes in, in and around Brussels. That's just a two-liner. Looks quite complicated, by, uh, but I'll start to explain this. The first thing is the statement node. OpenStreetMap data consists of uh, three different types of uh, data types. It's not organized in layers. It's one big data set. And uh, there are nodes, which are essentially coordinates. There are ways, which are lists of nodes and which, um, which don't carry coordinates. It's something that's um, often vexing for people, but uh, it's just the way it was uh, decided nowadays uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, relations with which are essentially lists of anything, nodes, ways, or relations. And in this case, in the case of the post boxes, it's quite easy because they are really, they have no spatial extent. We can, we can be sure that these are nodes. This can't be ways or relations. So we can choose, we only need to choose nodes. For the sake of simplicity, I've chosen to supply a bounding box. This is uh, the bounding box between uh, 50 point eight degrees and yes, you can read this. And um, every object in OSM can carry an arbitrary number of tags. This is essentially what uh, 
gives uh, or makes uh, makes um, content into the database. When you really get uh, we annotate these coordinates with uh, the property of being a post box or being something else, being a bus stop or being whatever. And uh, this is a free text feature. So the best thing is uh, so one of the but uh, for common things like post boxes or bus stops or schools or whatever, they are accepted uh, key value pairs. For example, for post boxes, it's a manager post box, and you can just uh, select this, and then it, then this will result in all nodes that are within this bounding box and that carry a tag a manager post box. And then you get all the results. Of course, it's uh, quite arbitrary to take this bounding box, and we would prefer prefer to take in to take in instead only the results of buffers. This is what I've done on this next slide. Now we only get the post boxes and buffers, which are surprisingly few. But I okay. Okay. So I've uh, I've just called the city of buffers instead of the region. Okay. Let's see why. I've uh, decided to uh, query for an area which has the name uh, Brussels. I wasn't sure what uh, ends up in the name tag. This is a this is a long and complicated issue. Uh, people tend, in, in particular in uh, multi-language countries, uh, do surprising things in the name tag itself because you have to choose: do you put uh, Dutch first? Do you put Dutch second? And uh, do you put both in, or if you was just one? So, <laughs> in such a multi uh, in such a multi-language country. It's often best to choose one language and to rely on that uh, it's that the names are maintained in multiple languages. In fact, they are quite well. People are uh, the mappers of OpenStreetMap are really uh, good in uh, completing these kinds of data. So you can really rely on just uh, that in uh, Belgium uh, the name of art name of art tags are maintained. Okay. So the area that has been found has only been the city of Brussels. We'll have to look afterwards what the, what's the name or what's the French name of the region of Brussels. And uh, everything else looks quite similar as in the case before. But uh, in fact, these are three statements. I've decided to design the query language as an imperative language. Sounds quite surprising if you are used to, uh, to use SQL. You would expect rather a declarative language. But uh, the advantage is it's easier to debug. It's, uh, you can really say something has gone wrong after line one or something has gone wrong after line two. And the second more important advantage is when you do a really um, a resource intensive query, it's likely that it's also a quite long query. And uh, as people are lazy, they will try to find a shorter thing and tend to use uh, less resource intensive uh, mm, queries. That's in so far a problem as uh, we are not running on big hardware resources. All the users from the world are in fact uh, querying mostly the one uh, the one public available uh, instance and so as we have to share hardware resources uh, it's important to design it in a way it's, uh, such that it's easy for people to be uh, respons uh, to be responsible with resources okay so let's go uh, through this uh, request i have again searching for nodes which has an amenity post box <coughs> and which come from the area i have just found before And then we just return these nodes. Okay. To make it a little bit more complicated, we are now going to search for banks. The special thing about banks is they are often hosted in a building. And in this case, it, it might be that people have chosen that the building itself is a bank, but it might also be that people have chosen that the building is something else and there is a bank branch in the building. Both points of view have have a certain or are, are in a certain sense correct because you may have cases where you have a bank and something else in the building. Then it's quite clear that not the entire building is a bank. You have cases where uh, 
where the entire building has even been in history as uh, being closely attached to this bank, then you would uh, intuitively say the entire building is, should be the bank. So you uh, really have to search for both. You have to search for the notes when the bank is just um, has just been mapped as a single point of uh, as a single point of interest, but you also have to search for the way in case that you uh, in case that it is mapped at the building. Oh, it's a subtlety I haven't uh, written on the slide. Areas are in fact represented as either ways or relations that have multiple ways as members, which is also a thing. Um, with a 10 year backward perspective, one would say was it wasn't the most wise uh, decision, but uh, on a hands on project, uh, you have these things. And so um, a bank could be a node or a way. We have essentially the same query as before. We are, uh, we are having an amenity, or we are searching for amenity equals bank. This is a tagging for a bank. And we are searching for the area. There's just a subtle difference. I've stored the area in a dedicated uh, variable, the result of the first line to reuse it multiple times. This is really, this is one of the areas where you really see that it's an imperative language that you have to store the things in variables and, and then we read it again. But on the other hand, the most use cases are that you are either using it from JavaScript or Python or something else, which is imperative. And so people are used to, to handle these kinds of things. You just have to tell them to tell that it's important to think of this. Okay, then we want to collect both. So there's a statement around these two statements that makes it a compound statement. We are just want to return. These are these uh, parentheses. This indicates that we want as a result the result of this and the result of this. So it's really the onion of the two results. The nodes, these one for example, come from the first line. The ways, these one for example, come from the second line. And finally, this is again uh, one thing where the query language uh, cares for the specifics of uh, the data model design. We want to draw the ways, so we want to have coordinates. So it's just we have to tell that it's the thing that it should add coordinates to the ways, although by standards, ways won't have coordinates. It's just to, to make it uh, easy to use. So we can um, proceed with the final example. Oh, there's even one more. Ah, okay. That's a short one. The only thing that has changed is uh, we, have only, uh, no, we have only a single coordinate here, a single pro point of interest. And this is uh, because I've changed this uh, from out uh, geometry to out center, which would uh, collapse each geometry down to, a, down to a single point. It's no fancy algorithm. It's, uh, people often ask whether I should use the centroid. The problem is uh, you get all kind of weird geometry that might be there, that might be there for a way. You might have open lines, you might have closed lines, you might have, uh, if you are thinking of relations, you might have uh, a disk with a hole inside, and it's not so clear what a uh, what a centroid should be uh, should be the right or what uh, where the centroid should go in such cases. So I decided to instead return uh, to put a bounding box around the feature and just p uh, return the center of the bounding box. It's not something with good uh, with uh, particular good properties, but it's easy to understand what's happening. Okay, so one more is uh, we want to search for banks of a specific uh, bank chain. The first thing I've uh, found when I've clicked on the results was named ING. I don't know if it's a particular bank here in Belgium. And um, the thing is people tend to, it's like with the buildings, uh, with the building problem whether banks are nodes or ways. People tend to, some tend to, if there is a bank with a certain location in a suburb, some tend to name it ENG and then the name of the suburb. For example, this could have the name ENG Etabeek, but could also be that the name of this bank is 
bank or ba a branch at a big and uh, the operator is ING. And uh, so we have to search for quite a lot of variants of uh, how it could have been mapped. But it is really what the query language accounts for that you could handle all these cases of different implement or all these cases of different styles of mapping, which are for some, which are, you can of course uh, ask whether we could force the mappers to, to s uh, map it in a certain way, a style, but uh, we don't want this because it would, uh, this would scare away people, which is a big issue. We want to keep a healthy community. And also, often reality it doesn't fit into the uh, into a certain uh, data model, and so we get quite a good <coughs> feedback how reality really looks like if we keep the data model op open. Okay, as I've just told, we could have the e ing shortcut either in the name or the operator. These are the common ways to to map. Um, bank chains or supermarket chains or whatever. Okay, so I could proceed with the final example. That's the one that you have been already seen before. As you may have noticed, there are some more lines. And this is uh, thanks to this tool of Overpass Turbo, which uh, allows to, to give the results a style. It's a really nice feature in this case. It's called uh, Map CSS. And it's also a language uh, centered around the needs of OpenStreetMap, and which would allow you to, to give in such a snippy map overlay to give the features a certain, uh, certain design. This, uh, this language is also reused in one of the most important editors, uh, JOSM. So, but I don't know if there are any use cases outside of uh, OpenStreetMap. Okay, and so in the end, when you have all these, uh, when you uh, have all, the, whoops, whatever is happening now, okay. When you have all these, when you have all, when you have all these maps, you can quite easily, with a few lines of code, you can get quite a well, quite a nice looking map that would visualize whatever you wanted to present. In this case, the power distribution network of the Netherlands uh, divided by the, uh, by the voltage of the individual lines, which suggests that there is certain, uh, a certain parting into a northern and a southern part uh, with uh, different networks. Okay, so to give a conclusion, OpenStreetMap has, uh, has often the geodata for your project whenever you need general purpose geodata then it's very likely that you would get good uh, geodata, good enough geodata from, uh, from OpenStreetMap. And uh, the Overpass API makes this data really accessible to the level that you only need a single, a single page or a single tool and you don't need to worry about uh, how to get updates and so on. You just fetch the data set you need. Okay, I thank you for your attention and uh, I'm ready for questions. I think usually you can just query it every time you want to render it because if you really want to, to render it, you have quite a few data and so it's, uh, it doesn't make uh, too much load to, to query it each time. Um, there are currently three formats available. One is uh, JSON. It's not GeoJSON. For mainly for the reason that you uh, that it's not so clear what's an area and what's not, you have really an, a dedicated uh, conversion step to get out of waste areas. You have uh, you are getting in return uh, XML. This is essentially the XML that we also use internally in OpenStreetMap for communication, and you also could get uh, could get a tabular view uh, view, which is an, a tab separated uh, list of <coughs> entries.
um, you can ask for polygons as boundaries. Um, there is, uh, to return the question, uh, in, the in Overpass Turbo there, there could be a suggestion of property. In fact, there is. It's called wizard. It, if I go back, it's a German edition, I'm sorry for this. Um, but it's also in the English edition, it's also called wizard. If you click here, you could uh, enter a thing like, uh, for example, post boxes in uh, in Brussels and it will suggest the query. I'm not in particular sure what happens in Brussels because I'm not sure if it is uh, designed for these multi-language cases. Yes? You can, you can get the city where you are in. This is, um, it's called is in this query. And you just, uh, when you have a either a coordinate it is supplied to the query or when you have a result of a former um, of a former query step then you would get with this comment all the areas that uh, this point is inside of yes uh, of course what it or to be precisely there are two different use cases if you really want to work with the raw data and debug what's wrong with the data it's probably better to to get the raw results if you really want to to be something that's uh, that's sane and sensitive and intelligent, then you would uh, use uh, nominatum because nominatum is really good at uh, understanding what's happening with the data and correcting errors. Whether Overpass API is uh, faithful in the sense of that you always get the raw data on purpose to to il to allow debugging uh, data anomalies. Yes. Um, yes, it's, um, if you supply a certain timestamp between 2012 and now, it's 2012 because we changed the license then. It would uh, make legal issues to, to have older data also. <coughs> and, um, and then if you supply a timestamp, you would get the results if they w as if they were at the point of that, of that time. So you could, uh, you could easily get the, t uh, the data as it were last week. Yes, that's possible. It's uh, still under development, to be precise. So it's uh, quite humble at the moment, but possible. You could get, uh, you could other get the data from last week, get the data from this week, and do the comparison yourself. Or you could even employ employ a special comment that is called a diff that will return you only what has changed since the last week. Okay. Um, that's a difficult one. None that I'm immediately aware of. There are some uh, applications, but um, I don't want to, uh, I'm, I'm not knowing one particular at the moment. So. Uh. Yes, but I think it's sorry, it's not what he meant. He's he's searching for an uh, Android application that would fetch a particular particular piece of data, and I'm not aware if there's such a general Android application. Okay, are there further questions, remarks? The UMAP is really something uh, I could suggest to use. It's really great, but I think it's a talk on its own. So maybe we should encourage the UMAP people to, to give a talk in the next year here in this room. Okay, then thank you again.